community recreation time, Francis. I, I looked for you in the fields. Oh, you're missing a day in a thousand, my boy. I could feel the earth trembling under my feet with new life. Spring is on its way. God has remembered us again. I meant to go out later. <laughs> when I was a boy, on a day like this, my brothers and I would celebrate by taking off our long winter underwear. <laughs> In the spring, an old man's fancy turns to thoughts of other springs. You're thinking, when will he stop rambling and get to the point, if any? Francis, that problem we spoke of, have you prayed for guidance? Yes, I have. And the answer is always the same. God's answer or yours? Dear Mother has written to me. Written to you? Yes. And just this morning, we've spoken on the telephone. Oh, I'm sorry Mother's involved you, Father Abbott. The lady's desperate. I told her right after Dad's funeral. I told her it was impossible. She tells me that the advertising agency is having financial trouble. Well, Mother's exaggerating. There are competent, loyal people in charge, the people that Dad trained and trusted. My kid brother will take over when he graduates from Fordham next year. Mm -hmm. Well, in the meantime... There's nothing I can do. Well, you do know the advertising business. I know it. Watching my father wheel and deal, working with him, watching him connive and compromise, that's what brought me here. Francis. I've been praying, too. And the answer I seem to hear isn't the same as yours. For your family's sake and yours, you must take hold of the business for a year. A year in that place? That's spiritual suicide. No. Suicide's cutting ourselves off from other people. Well, you're tempted to do that even here. But, Father Abbott, I came here to find God. Do you think you can find him, except through other people? Go back, Francis. If I'd wanted Macy's basement, I wouldn't have come to a monastery. But you did come to a monastery. You know the rules we live by. Of course I do. What are they, Francis? Poverty, chastity, obedience. I'm telling you to go. You're actually putting me under religious obedience to go back to that hell hole? Francis, you've got it. Insight. Stories of modern man's search for meaning. Freedom. Love. Insight. Every human being wants a rich, happy life, full of meaning and purpose. There's no dispute about this. We start to disagree when we try to decide where we can find that kind of happiness and what we have to do to get it. Some people think that they can get this happiness by making more and more money and by consuming more and more things. Other people look for happiness deep within themselves. They seek to descend to the loving ground of their own being and there enter into communion with the loving ground of all being. How about you? Where do you look for your happiness? Oh, good morning, Mrs. Jeffries. Uh, Francis, you remember Sarah. Mm. I'm going to be your secretary, Father. Uh, I mean, Brother Francis. For the next year, Mr. Jeffries will do nicely, Sarah. I'll tell Mr. Ryan you're here. Thank you. Dad's still keeping an eye on things, huh? I never liked that portrait. <laughs> Don't you hear him laughing? Seeing me here in this office just as originally planned. He just couldn't understand you. He tried. Francis! Gus! 
Welcome back to where it's at. Oh, and I thought I've been where it's at all this time. <laughs> hey, you've lost weight. Mm, how's the family? Oh, great. Lois is into macrame. Kitty's playing the lead in the sixth grade play. Tom just pitched a no-hit game. Now, yeah, my turn now. How are things at St. Basil's? Oh, well, it looks like a bumper year for our flax crop. Uh, Brother Theo's whole grain bread won the Chicago Bake Off, and uh, Brother Francis here has just been drafted for the civilian wars. <laughs> uh, yes, just a minute. Oh, thanks. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right, right, across the board. Yes, before and after 6 o'clock news. Yep. Well, uh, suppose first we... Get one thing straight. Hmm? I feel absolutely no resentment about Alice asking you to sit in here. Oh, you know it's no reflection on you, Gus. Oh, well, as the old man used to say, be honest with yourself about yourself, and other people's opinions can never hurt you. Well, I know I'm doing a job here. I'm doing it the way he taught me to do it. Well, he had great faith in you, Gus. <laughs> but I can understand why Alice would want a member of the family on hand, and, well, whatever comforts and reassures this lady is what I want. I appreciate you saying this, Gus. Hey, look, where would I be without the Jeffreys family? <laughs> well, now I can go to the hairdresser, knowing the agency is in the best of hands. How can we miss? We've always been sharp and aggressive. Now we have God on our side. <laughs> <laughs> See you tonight, Mother. Goodbye, dear. Thanks again, Gus. Not at all. Okay, Francis. Niceties observed. Down to business. Now, I see no reason why we can't ride this operation in tandem, peddling together. All major policy decisions, we collaborate. But I can relieve you of the responsibility for most of the details, account servicing, uh, copy approval. Excuse me, sir, they're waiting for an okay on these proofs. Oh. Hey, you should be doing this. <laughs> Give me a day or two. Thanks. Look, Francis, I'm here because it's what I want, what I've always wanted. Now, I know that you're here just to please your mother. I am here to reassure my mother, but I'm also looking for something for myself. You looked here once before. I mean, I saw a lot of things that made me feel angry, frustrated. Dad said that's the way it is. I accepted that and got out. That's still the way it is. Mm -hmm. But now I'm in a different position. So don't spare me anything, Gus. I want to be just as involved on every level as you are. You're the boss. For a year. Well, Mr. Timmons, come in. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, but today has been such a jumble of unrelated bits and pieces that I, I had to have a few minutes meditation just to get back to the center. Please sit down. Is it uh, Chris or Christian? Christopher. Hmm. You write very well. Thank you. I'm glad you like the Cersei campaign. Hmm, well, I didn't say that. I said you write well. Well, Gus felt I'd come up with just the right note on that copy. He wanted me to get you OK. Yeah. Do you write anything besides commercial copy? Mr. Jeffries, I've been struggling for nearly a month to come up with just the right trigger for that ad. Poetry. Do you ever write any poetry? I did in college, yes, but there's not much money in poetry. Well, not money, but lots of satisfaction. Have you ever tried any haiku? As a matter of fact, uh, I have a notebook filled with my haiku attempts. Oh, yeah? Isn't it a great discipline? Seventeen syllables. Or... Life. A butterfly on a swaying grass blade. That is all, but exquisite. Mm. Enviable leaves becoming so beautiful just before falling. Mm -hmm. But I don't see what haiku has to do with selling Cersei deodorant. No, we're not talking about Cersei. We're talking about you. Where do you want to go, Chris? Where do I want to go? Yeah, do you want to spend the rest of your life here writing commercial copy? Or are there books to be written, maybe? Plays? Look, I give this shop its money's worth 50, 60 hours a week, every week. What I do with my time is my business. Oh, so you've managed to divide the inseparable self into tiny compartments, absolutely no spillover. Why don't you like my copy? Why do you think it's good? It's strong, hard-hitting stuff. 
Or you a lonely loser outside the inner circle be in with Cersei? Uh-huh, you have the brains, you have the brawn, but he has the bird. Why? Are you offending? Be certain with Cersei, the deodorant that magnetizes every male. All right, now look, you're communicating, no doubt about that. But what you're appealing to is fear, insecurity. That's what motivates buyers. Everybody's vulnerable. Your father taught me that. Mm. Find a weak spot and hit them right there. Mm. And you enjoy that technique. Mr. Jeffries, I'm hired to write copy that will sell Cersei deodorant. I'm not producing Socratic dialogue. Your only responsibility is to Cersei. And this agency, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, what about your obligation to yourself and to the millions of people who can be affected by what you write? I, I, I really don't know what you want from me. But what do you want from you? Uh, mightn't there be a positive approach? Is there a chance that we might appeal to something better in people? To sell deodorant? You remind me of myself three years ago. <laughs> Instead of fear and self-loathing, how about trying to tap that deep-down concern that we feel for each other? It's offbeat. Well, you're certainly skillful enough to make it work. I bet on it. So why don't you give it a try? Now, look, I will take all the responsibility. Why not? It'd be kind of exciting to be challenged again. Mm -hmm. A positive approach to deodorant? That's a challenge. With patience, the robin builds again the nest the autumn wind destroys. Uh, uh, extemporaneous, you see? Is this your idea of collaboration? Excuse me. I okayed the original layouts that Chris did. Now I find that independently you rejected that copy and sent the client this watered down pat. Did you realize you probably cost us the account? Look, if you want Chris to write sermonettes for you, fine, but don't mess with the copy. Mr. Hopkins, would you repeat what you just told me? I said this a new ad campaign's the best thing you've done in years. It took me completely by surprise. And I realized we'd been too predictable lately, hitting the same old notes. This is fresh, novel. Congratulations. Well, <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hopkins. I, I appreciate your calling. Uh, goodbye, sir. All right. This time you got lucky. Don't let it go to your head. Oh, that thing hangs like a sack on her. Come on, Lori. Turn it down, baby. Love it. Love it. Do. Well, that's as sexy as Whistler's mother. Stupid broad. How many times do I have to tell her? We're wasting our money on this one. You're right. right. Cut! 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 Uh, better give the boys five. I'll go shove a blow to them. Engineering uh, five. is only good for still pictures. Whether you're afraid to bruise yourself with the car, but you're not turning on. Yeah, you gotta give me something, you know what I mean? You're supposed to be having an affair with this car. You want to take the Pardon car. Me. May I speak with Miss Haynes a moment? Yeah, sure. What could it hurt? Do you have any suggestions? Just one. Oh, that's a very unusual necklace. Thanks, I designed it. Oh, you have a flair. Okay, I've had the compliment. Now the criticism. Suggestion. Suggestion. Don't do this commercial. <laughs> when you make a suggestion, it's a beaut. Well, why let yourself be used like this? I'm a model. Uh, you get paid to let them merchandise your sex appeal. So? So, it's demeaning for you and it's dishonest as advertising. <laughs> dishonest? Who are you? Francis Jeffries. Oh, you're the... the, the monk? Mm -hmm. Well, welcome to the world. Why is it dishonest? Because they are using you to sell a thing. Well, what's wrong with that? Men have fantasies, I feed them. That's what you pay me for. But that makes a thing out of you. <laughs> Wait a minute. What do you know about sex? The world's too much for you. Go back to your monastery. Francis, we're ready. Okay, I get paid, but everybody uses sex to sell. Look at the ads in the magazines and TV. It's the way we live. Why blame me? No, I am not suggesting you change anyone but yourself. Look, if I didn't do this, some other girl would. Well, that says something about her, but we were talking about you. Thanks for this sermon. 
Why should I be the exception? Because you are exceptional. And you'll be so much happier when you stop denying that. Francis, you're holding us up. <sighs> what difference does it make to you how I earn my living? Well, uh, a few days ago, I would have said no difference at all. But you know the expression, no man is an island. Francis, this is costing us $50 a minute. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind. Well, let's not worry about mankind. Let's concentrate on you. I'll buy you lunch. Walk out? Well, I suppose I paid you not to do this commercial. I don't want your money. But you can buy me lunch. Francis, where are you going? Francis! Hey! Oh, oh, Mr. Ryan, he left word he did not want to be disturbed. He isn't alone. Come on in, Gus. I'm learning to meditate. Join us. Francis. Already I feel different, more calm. This little meditation session has cost Jeffrey's advertising $9,000 so far. Lori's decided not to do the commercial. She, well, that's fine. Models are a dime a dozen. Not quite that cheap. And I don't feel our agency should use sex to manipulate the consumer. Are you kidding? No, you're not kidding. Look, with those juggernaut ads, we're giving the public just what it wants, and the company has the sales figures to prove it. If it's a question of more money... It isn't. I decided to try something different. I started out to be a designer and got sidetracked. Well, maybe it isn't too late. We'll see. I'll stay in touch, Francis. Good luck. Francis, you're... Uh... <laughs> Now, you're, you're not serious about this new no-sex policy, hmm? There are lots of approaches to selling, Gus. Francis. <clears throat> Well, you, you, you're part of a very special group. But ads are not created to appeal to one half of one percent of the population. Ninety-nine and a half percent of all the men enjoy looking at a pretty girl. Now, if they want to equate our product with virility, with, with having a girl like Lori in their car, who's hurt? The girl, the producers, and the viewers. Francis, this agency is in trouble. Billings are a way off. Now, if we lose this we juggernaut account... We need to account, lose the account. We simply take a different approach. We present hard evidence that the car is a good buy. You had a one in a million win with your cockeyed Circe thing, but please don't try to turn sweetness and light into a company policy. Advertising's job is to inform the public. Advertising's job is to move product. Most people feel empty, incomplete. That's what the old man said. All they know is they want something. Now, our job is to convince them that what they want is what we've got, no matter what it is. <laughs> Buy more things and you won't feel empty. You know, that's the biggest lie of all. So since you've come back, you might as well have your revenge, is that it? In a lot less than a year, you can destroy everything it took him his whole life to create. That isn't what I want. Isn't it? Do me a favor. Before you shove anything else into that shredder you call a conscience, ask yourself why you're doing it. Are you driving the money changers out of the temple? Or are you having the last word in an argument you could never win while your old man was alive? <laughs> Juggernaut rejected the tape? Well, of course they rejected it. A middle-aged mechanic in greasy coveralls talking about gear ratios? Well, what now? Oh, I don't know. Maybe we can still save the account with my original concept. Have you heard from Laurie? Uh, she has a job, uh, apprentice designer at Enamel Art. She sounds very happy. Oh, great. Excuse me, Mr. Winkler of Crawford Laboratories. We're meeting in my office. Wait, 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 just a minute. Why wasn't I told that Mr. Winkler was coming in? Look, I know Winkler. He and I are old friends. I understand just what he wants. I, I haven't seen any proposals, any files. Well, what is this product? Francis, this is our chance to get well. If we do a good job on this promotion, Winkler has promised me that Crawford Laboratories will move all their advertising over here. Now, we're talking about eight, ten million a year. We're talking about salvation. What is the product? It's a new diet pill, never gain. I want to sit in on the meeting. You please send Mr. Winkler in and bring me the Crawford Laboratories file. Sit in. OK, but that's it. You sit in and you listen. 
Harold. Hey, Goss, good <laughs> to see you. This is Francis Jeffries, our new president. It's a pleasure. Your father has always been a personal hero. I like this very positive approach you've taken. <laughs> the answer to 80 million overweight prayers. A safe, easy, surefire way of solving forever the problems of being overweight. Well, think of the lives we can save. Cutting down on heart attacks, high blood pressure, diabetes, you name it. And what is important, we've finally come up with a diet medicine that the FDA cannot attack. You see, all the old formulas use amphetamines. <laughs> We're 100% clean. Oh, what are you using? Well, the basis of uh, Nevergain is an enzyme inhibitor. Mm -hmm. No matter what you eat, no matter how much you eat, or drink. you will not, you cannot gain one ounce. Oh, your, your formula prevents enzyme production. Uh, it prevents the secretion of digestive enzymes. Oh, so the food passes through the body unused and uh, <laughs> wasted. It's as simple as that. Like old great ideas. Yes. Well, there were a few details that the lab had well, to work Mr. out. Well, Mr. Winkler, I don't think there's any reason to waste our time by discussing details. The Jeffries Agency cannot accept the Nevergain account. I beg your pardon. I said we can't sell your product. Francis. Nevergain. All of the pleasure, none of the pain. You know, when a third of the world goes to bed hungry every night, what could be more obscene than a pill designed to destroy the very nutrition that the starving beg us for? You're completely overlooking the incredible life-saving no, benefits. Look, I, I am no. not overlooking a vicious and a criminal waste. Gus, I think you might have spared me this. Harold, I, I, Mr. Winkler, will you think? Will, will you think of the hundreds of products that your laboratory could produce that the world needs? Now, how about an enzyme accelerator to increase the nutritional yield of food? Mr. Jeffries. We have a product. There's a need for it in a wide market. Now, I'm very sorry if you've elected not to get involved. Harold, I understand how you feel, but please don't do anything for a day or two, will you? Hmm? Please. You are certifiable. Oh, Gus, Gus, can you honestly look at Nevergain and deny that it is the last thing that a hungry world needs? I look at Nevergain and I see something that millions of people want. I see a product that will let people eat more, drink more, buy more! And Junior, that's what it's all about, consumption. That's what built this country, consumer power. And anything that encourages increased consumption is positive. Oh, you have the gall to talk to me about selfishness. Where were you for the last 10 years when you should have been helping the old man? Shut up in your own private world, contemplating your navel, polishing your spotless soul, enjoying your untested superiority, selfishness. Brother, you made it a way of life. All right, all right. I have been selfish and closed off. I don't want that anymore. I do care and I am involved. And now med meditation will always ah! come first for me because that's where I find the meaning to my life. That's where I find the strength that I need. But when I am touched by that reality, then I want to share it with others. I want to swing like a pendulum, Gus. But between communing with him and sharing with others. I'm sorry, dear. I thought you'd be good for the company, but Gus has just shown me the figures. We're in very bad shape. After the thing with Nevergain, I told your mother that you and I couldn't work together. I had to make a choice. I know you did your best, Francis. I was wrong. This just isn't your life. Yes. Yes, it is. It is my life, all of it. I did learn that much. Mystics belong in monasteries, Francis, not in advertising agencies. I disagree. As usual. And maybe what's needed is more mystics, one in every agency, your token mystic. Men and women who don't fit in, who do ask uncomfortable questions about materialism and manipulation and thingification. Look, I know how you feel about me. I don't blame you. This is going to make you uncomfortable, Gus. But what I feel for you now is love. The same thing that I finally come to feel for my father. You know, Gus, you can love a person and you still don't want to be like him. I couldn't agree more. Alistair. I beg and beg you to come here. I even enlist Father Abbott's help. And when I get my way, what do I do? I fire you. It doesn't make much sense, does it? Hmm? Could have made sense. And Chris, do you know my mother? Hello. Oh. 
Gus told me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. What now? I'll go back. With patience, the robin builds again. The nest the autumn wind destroyed. Mm. Thank you, Francis. It was a very short year, Francis. I failed, Father Abbott. Isn't that what you intended? Well, yeah, maybe at first, but then I became involved. I began to care. You found it wasn't as bad as you feared? Oh, no, the system was every bit as bad. But the people involved, I guess I got to know them better, and I found them, uh, well, very beautiful. Well, then why do you say you failed? Because I wanted to change the system. I wanted to make it honest and more humane, and I didn't. I almost bankrupted the company. I got fired. W were you faithful to yourself? I tried to be, but I hurt the people I wanted to help, the people that I love. You're hurting very badly yourself, aren't you? More than you've ever hurt before? No, Francis. The Lord has a strange way of measuring success. He's not so concerned with how big the harvest as with how well we plant the seed. Mm, I didn't plant any seed. I stomped on it. Where do I go from here? Where do you want to go? I want to come back. Why? To hide out from the big, bad world? No. No, it's just somehow, and I, I can't explain why, but I feel God wants me here. Now, I guess he's got someone else to plant the seeds, but maybe from here I can reflect a little bit of the sun. So what do you say? You got any room around here for a broken down huckster? To tell you the truth, Francis, somebody's got to do something to move Brother Theo's whole grain bread. <laughs> Insight is a production of the Paulist Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who seek to share the good news of God's love with all their brothers and sisters in the human family.